Pamela Lidge provided her testimony in front of the Emergencies Act inquiry on Thursday and Friday. Apparently, she testified in front of the Public Order Emergency Commission, which is examining the decision made by the Trudeau Liberal government to invoke the Emergency Act, which had never been used before in order to clear the crowds and vehicles that had been blocking parts of the downtown area of Ottawa for three weeks. Lich was one of the organizers who was taken into custody along with fellow organizer Chris Barber the day before hundreds of police officers in tactical gear came in to clear the streets around Parliament Hill in February. The two have been accused of engaging in disruptive behavior, impeding law enforcement, and encouraging others to engage in disruptive behavior and intimidation, and the trial is set to take place in the fall of next year. You're welcome back to Front Page News, viewers, and today we've got yet another exposition into the hypocrisy of the left and legacy media, Justin Trudeau's tyrannical infringement on the freedom of well-meaning Canadian citizens, the labeling of the peaceful Canadian protesters as terrorists, the manhandling, and particularly, the true side of the story of Trudeau's government's tyranny from one of the boldest freedom fighters of the convoy truckers, Tamara Lich. Lich told the inquiry late on Thursday that she joined the Freedom Convoy because she did not get a response from members of Parliament to emails she sent to them on the removal of restrictive COVID-19 mandates. And describing the protest as peaceful, Lich said she wouldn't tolerate threats and hate speech. This is the biggest love fest I've ever participated in, she said. At the same time, Lich testified on Friday that she was unaware of claims that crowds would sometimes swarm police and bylaw officers and that she was unaware of any death threats leveled against politicians until she began to watch the commission proceedings. She equally disclosed that she also had received death threats, while doubling down that, at the time, she wasn't aware of the death threats that had been directed at former Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson, former Ottawa Police Chief Peter Slowly, Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Then, a lawyer for the Trudeau Liberals questioned her over an Ontario Provincial Police report that had identified a motorist with the roadblock who had made inflammatory words. And in response, Lick said she was not aware of that incident while also stating that while many people see her as the convoy protest leader, she didn't feel that she was and therefore she reasonably could not be held responsible for demonstrators refusing to leave. They're all human beings. I don't control anyone. Lich said while adding that she distanced herself from the participants accused of violent behavior and insisted she was advocating for peace throughout the protest. And in what appears to be a touching side of Tamara Lich's story, she had explained her major objective behind standing up to the Trudeau liberal government's restrictive mandates and narcissistic policies in February. Lich explains that she got involved with the convoy because of the injustices she saw in her that was caused by the COVID restrictions and wanted to give people hope. I have the tears of thousands of Canadians on my shoulder who told me every day that we were bringing them hope. Tamara Lich testified Thursday at the inquiry into the federal government's use of the Emergencies Act. And while mentioning that during the COVID restrictions, her 94-year-old grandmother was locked in her apartment alone in Saskatchewan for two years, a period she needed aid and company the most, Lich said she was also concerned with the division the Prime Minister was creating between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Watch this. I was becoming increasingly alarmed listening to my prime minister call me a racist and say that I shouldn't be tolerated. I found his rhetoric to be incredibly divisive and I'm a, I'm a believer that if you're a leader of a country, you have to lead all of your people, even if you don't agree with them. And I, I just saw so much coming across Canada every day. I heard stories, people, at least three people would tell me they were planning their suicides until we started the convoy or stories of people that we were too late. I heard from families that were living in their vehicles because they'd lost their jobs. I heard from people that had lost their jobs and lost everything. I have the tears of thousands of Canadians on my shoulder who every day told me that we were bringing them hope. I saw little old ladies praying on their knees on the side of the road, and I saw little children holding signs saying, thank you for giving me back my future. This is really depressing, and what's really ironic and grim is that it's happening in a supposedly democratic, Trudeau, liberal governed country like Canada. Everyone claims that the Charter of Rights protects essential liberties such as freedom of thinking, belief, opinion, and expression, which also includes freedom of the press and other forms of media of communication. Everyone, that is, with the exception of Tamara Lich, 
who was one of the organizers of the demonstration that took place in Ottawa during January and February on behalf of the Truckers' Freedom Convoy. And perhaps the most outrageous of all is that Litch is required by the terms of her bail to maintain complete silence in public until the outcome of her court hearing in September 2023. This includes absolutely no use of social media of any kind. All of this for exercising her constitutionally protected right to demonstrate in a free country. Similarly, there is the rather frightening game of cat and mouse played out between the Crown Prosecutor and Litch from February until July this year. Accordingly, after an arrest, a person may typically spend no more than 24 hours in jail before their bail is determined. In other words, this is the maximum length of time a person can spend behind bars before their release. And after posting bail, an accused person is permitted to re-enter society as long as they swear not to disrupt public order and comply with any other conditions set down by the police or the court until the outcome of their trial. However, Litch remained incarcerated for almost 50 days. She was freed, and then she was re-arrested on many occasions. And when she finally appeared in court, she was restrained even as she also had to appear in court for five different bail hearings. You know, it is not only weird, but also completely outrageous to behave in such a manner. Moreover, all of this apparently occurred as a result of accusations that are seen as being very minor offenses. In fact, it is possible that the time she has already spent being incarcerated will be more than sufficient for any penalty if she is found guilty when the trial finishes in September of next year. But even at that, the situation is already in a much worse state. Litch has been mandated as a bail condition to literally have her whole life and mind incarcerated until September next year. And if you find it strange how the Trudeau liberals did imprison her whole existence, let's get right to the analysis. Apparently, Litch is required by her bail conditions not to contact or communicate in any way, either directly or indirectly, by any physical, electronic, or other means with a list of 10 prominent leaders of the Freedom Convoy, including Tom Morazzo, except through legal counsel or in the presence of a legal counsel. She mustn't log on to social media or post any messages on social media, allow anyone else to post messages on social media on her behalf, or indicate her approval for any future protests. She also mustn't engage in organizing or promoting anti-COVID mandate activities or freedom convoy activities, verbally or in writing, financially or by any other means, support anything related to the freedom convoy. Of course, you will agree this is a mental torture for an astute freedom fighter and frontliner who greatly believes in a society less ridden by overbearing government policies under a forceful and narcissistic WEF brainwashed leader. Arguably, Lich is muffled. Her capacity to speak freely about her ideas, views, and opinions has been stifled. And worse still, she is obligated to keep up this manner of life until the conclusion of her trial one year from now. In what way does it make any sense? It is not. And taking into account the fact that she is not permitted to use any kind of social media at all when it is not tied to planning fresh demonstrations or to freedom convoy at the present, it literally covers a much unreasonable wider scope. The implication of this is that Litch would be unable to leave comments on the Facebook pages of her grandkids, send a tweet to announce a family event, or leave comments on the significant life events of her friends. Nothing. The mandate is just for her to be completely radio silenced. And just like Professor Thomas Pangle noted, the worst and fullest tyranny to which mankind tends to be enslaved is the tyranny over the mind, the tyranny over opinion, and above all the tyranny over moral opinion and opinion as to what is right and wrong. Any intelligent creature is aware that there is never a moment when our thoughts are completely empty at any one moment. Moreover, given that we live at a time where the exercise of one's freedom of speech is honored on social media platforms, we are able to empathize with the tremendous challenges that this circumstance presents for Lich's daily existence. Quite frankly, from all of these, Tamara Lich apparently did nothing wrong. I guess her only crime seems to be her embarrassing the egoistic Trudeau liberal government. Meanwhile, it's rather shameful that the hypocritical government-funded and brainwashed legacy media and leftist activists have been countlessly seen screaming and crying about how women are held back from success because of society. But when women like Tamara Lich gather support and success, they're mercilessly hated by those same activists and media. A woman who has more than paid her dues for the cause of free speech, which she is now denied, should be afforded the basic decency of being granted justice. It is really beyond time for the Trudeau liberals and the Janus face government-sponsored legacy media to put a stop to the tyranny and vilification of Tamara Lich. And that's it, viewers. What are your thoughts on this? Please leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Share this video with as many people as possible and drop your opinion in the comment section below. And keep in mind that we are always determined to boldly expose the hypocrisy of the left wing and mainstream media while keeping you updated and conscious. See you in my next video.
Thanks for watching.